Spook, you ready? Yo, what's going on, man? Hey, what's going on with you? Nothing much, nothing much. Hey, hey, man, you you killed him. That dude, it was on here. Hey, he was just a lost soul. I know that was a little while ago, but that's when I really actually pushed the request button. But yeah, he. That's crazy because you know us as black people, we'll never go around some white people that don't like us. You know what I'm saying? So he's just a lost soul. But yeah, that's all I had to say. You brother thank you so much let's get danny danny in the building what's up Tariq? hey danny how are you i just got a question about uh what percentage would you need to be to be fba like what percentage of black not a percentage it's a parent it's a lit well i mean my shit got diluted a lot but uh how how did how do you how did it get diluted your lineage is your lineage your lineage uh, well it's it got a lot of white so what happened was you uh if you google norman simmons he was an american musician out of chicago that's my great grandfather so okay. he had he had a he had a daughter with my great grandmother and she's full white so, now what are you now what are you now my dad's half black half white and then my mom's full puerto rican okay so you, that means that you probably classify yourself as white now. Um, okay. Yeah. Your your dad, now where's your dad from? And, and Norman He's Simmons. from Chicago. And Norman Simmons is from your dad's side? Yeah, yeah. That's your dad's what? Grandfather. Okay. Where's Norman Simmons from originally? Uh, Chicago. If you Google his name, it'll pop up. you see everything about him. But he's from Chicago. That's all I know. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. That's your he's your your he your great granddad? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So yeah, he would um yeah, so it, that's your great granddad. And yeah. you are but the thing is, here's the problem with here's the problem. Uh, you are most likely passive for white. Yeah, that's I mean you, 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 you can say that. When I don't get a lot of sun, I do look white. Yeah, you're passing for white, so um, you're not eligible because you're not classified as black. That's the thing. That's the great thing about how to um, check the lineage. You are not a foundational black American right now. Okay, I got you. You all see right. what I'm saying? Yep, yep. That's all I wanted to know. But there you go. That's a great question. He asked. See, that's this is why words matter. Family, this is why words matter. That's why the term foundational black American is a very Trump type word. It's a solid word. It's a solid term. So when people come in and try to circle back when they negate their blackness and they see, oops, there might be some money coming. Let me circle back. No, 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 no. You have to currently be a foundational black American. Yeah. And you're classified as white. When he said Puerto Rican and his dad has white, no, no, no. That's 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 him. He, you classified as white now. If you're classified as white now, that negated anything. Everything is nullified. That nullified um, any type of compensatory justice because now you're not classified as black anymore. You're not a foundational black American. You're classified as white. You cannot be both. You cannot be a foundational black American and white. You can't be both. You understand? This is why we got to, this is how we got to gatekeep. We got to use terms that gatekeep the game. Giancarlo, I see you down there trying to get some attention. I'll get you in a minute. Steven, hop in, sir. Steven, hop in. Steven, Steven, Steven. All right. You're not saying anything. Let me get um, Giancarlo, the Venezuelan um, fleeing anchor baby. Giancarlo. I had Giancarlo on last night. He's hey, in. yeah, sir. Um, you know, you were talking about um African uh, black American inventions, you know. Why can't you guys invent yourselves out of poverty? You know, why do you need handouts? Is what I We're we're not 
Venezuela like your broke family, sir. Or 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 one thing, why do you want an African why do you want You're not in Venezuela with your broke family fleeing? Why, over. why do you want Afro Puerto Rican? Why, why are you so broke in your homeland and you over here with us, Giancarlo? Because I'm talking to real Americans here, sir, because right. I am a Latin American. You ain't in Venezuela where your family fled from, sir. Why aren't you doing that? Why are you over there fixing this that? This is sir? why words matter, sir. Um, words I do am Latin American. Why fleeing matters. You fled over here to us because you couldn't cut it in your broke, dusty, dilapidated homeland, sir. You're over here with us. And did you think of anything y'all invented down there, sir? When I asked you last night, you got flustered because you couldn't. Uh, no, sir, because I have natural resources. Right, if you're talking about Venezuela, you don't know. Resources? Did you? Are you going to try to take claim for natural resources, something you ain't got nothing to do with? Well, it really? comes from my homeland, sir. I mean, do you, you, you use a car, right? I mean, unless you're a Democrat, you use an electric car. You do not you you use oil. Oh, you ain't got nothing to do with natural resources. That was there millions of years ago. You didn't have anything to do with that. So you didn't invent nothing, sir. Uh, but it's something that is used every day, sir, whether and you like it or not. you know. And you ain't benefiting from it. It ain't anything that you created or benefited from. The white people are going over there exploiting it. The Anglos, and you're a wannabe white, you didn't invent anything, sir. You can't point to anything you've invented, and you got a lot of nerve to point to yeah, fingers. Yeah, because you had a you had a, a, a black supremacist in your space talking about Venezuela and that one in four women get abused on. You know, there's slavery still in Africa, sir. You know, in the I'm, real Africa. don't live in Africa. Yeah. I don't live in Africa. You, you know, the kids that are getting exploited. I don't live in Africa, sir. Go holler at them. I'm a foundation of Black American. We're not African. That's not a flex. Okay, I'm just clarifying because you know you how you look. Salt on us, Giancarlo. But you a broke ass Venezuelan who had to flee. You understand? We ain't fleeing, right? Come on, Giancarlo. Uh, you guys don't flee because they take your passports away. You know, when you have a baby, one or two baby moms. Uh, got passports we just don't flee when we leave we bring our ass back like you're supposed to we don't impose no, our you just can't leave the country sir impose ourselves on other people like damn leeches we we're thorough enough to stand on our own two feet we ain't gotta leech off people sir right go ahead Giancarlo the fleeing tether who who leeches though I mean uh, do you see you, you ain't in your homeland. You over here eating off us and being disrespectful. Uh, you're not in your homeland. If it weren't for us, you'd be down there in South America riding a donkey picking coffee beans right now, digging headlights out of your ass. And if it wasn't for a white man, you would be in... No, it wasn't for white men, nothing. They didn't do nothing for us. We were their come up. They didn't do a damn thing for us. Everything we got, we got it out the mud. The white supremacists ain't never done nothing for us. Everything foundational black Americans got, we got it out the mud. If it weren't for us, the white supremacists would be in Europe eating a potato, beating on a woman in a cave somewhere. So you stop that, sir. Yeah, right. You know, yeah, because you taught them how to farm. You know, you taught this. Yeah, because they were over here starving. The the, the Anglos that and, you, and you taught you taught the last. Clothes you want to be like, they were over here starving. And in South America, in Central America, y'all didn't learn how to cultivate wheat until a black man taught you. Um, Juan Garrido, he was the one who taught you how to cultivate wheat. That was a black moor. Look him up, Juan Garrido. So, yeah, stop it, sir. Yeah, we, we don't smoke weed. That's look, that's like, like, um, like... you're just saying stuff, sir. Yeah, you're trolling is corny, Giancarlo. I would be insecure too if I was fleeing all over the place. Well, sir, I don't have an inferiority complex. That is your... Yeah, sir, you're very inferior. You want to be white. You fled from your homeland. You try to cosplay as us. <clears throat> you're ashamed of your lineage. Yeah, sir, you got a very, very major insecur uh, 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 an insecurity complex. You're very no, I want you guys to be proud, happy Americans. I don't we are, sir, we are the only true American, sir. We're the only, we represent what America is supposed to be. We are the only true American, sir. We're non-immigrants, sir. Well, the um, Latin Americans will have something to say for that, sir. Um, this is our side of the world, like I said yesterday. Um, we're going to have to learn to live with each other, whether you like it or not. Um, was, it your, was it your side of the world and you just fleeing up here? What, what you talking about? What, what have you created, sir? 
You can't even name one invention. You. I'm got. sorry. The Spaniards founded this side of the world. If you, you ain't Spanish. Uh, you know, Col America was in. You ain't Spanish, sir. You ain't Spanish, Giancarlo. And you're not American, sir. Yes, I am. That yes, I am, sir. Yes, I am. I come from the only true American, sir. Yeah, what I is your tribe called, sir? American culture, sir. American culture is foundational black American culture, sir. You ain't Spanish. I'm an, I've been in my homeland here in America for centuries. You can't go to Spain, sir. Can you? Yeah, um, yeah they actually welcome us with visas, actually. So, yeah, you get to so, go in there and work. They look at y'all like bastardized mongrels, sir. I've been to Spain. They don't look at you as one of them, sir. And you know it. That's why you're not over there. Right? Come on, Giancarlo. That's why y'all don't never go to Spain. How about no, you? because the American imperialists didn't want the Spanish here. You know, that's why the French and the English were here. Um, Haiti is what it is because of the French. And the Americans, well, they have you guys. So you know, it's as much as it is. Uh, they didn't mix with you guys. That was the issue. You know, colonization was different. Uh, the Portuguese had the roots in Africa already. They, they were the first ones to know about this. This is why Brazil is a big um, country that speaks Portuguese. Um, and you, they don't claim you, sir. Just as the Dominicans don't claim you. Who don't claim? What you talking about? Who claim us? Who? No, uh, well, you tethers that want to claim to like Afro Latinos or whatever, you know, because you who guys want to call yourself African American. You want? What are you talking about? Who? Who is? Who don't claim us, and who are we trying to get claimed by? Well, I'm saying because you guys want to claim the Dominicans. It's not like the Dominicans want to claim you. We don't you guys want to damn Dominican? What the hell? What kind of fantasizing are you doing? What? You fantasizing? Don't nobody FBAs give a damn about no damn Dominicans? Okay, get off my. You just saying shit. Get out of here. Okay, you just saying any damn thing. Don't nobody give a damn about no damn Dominicans. We ain't trying to claim you. Who are you to claim? If you don't get off here talking that nonsense, you sound stupid as hell. <laughs> and when y'all you you just ran out of troll material. And if you don't stop, Steven, are you ready to get on? All right, let me get Steven out of here. Let me get my brother EJ in the build. Let me get Steve out of here. Brother EJ, hop on. Brother EJ, hop on, sir. Hey, brother Tariq, how you doing, player? I'm good, man. How are you, sir? I'm doing good, man. I had to uh, rise out of my bed like the Undertaker because um, Carlo, he's definitely over there overdosing off Goya powder and you know stepping on coca leaves because this just goes to show you that people like him who has hatred and vitriol for their homeland, they'll never go back to their homeland. He's so busy in a place, in an unknown location, wherever he's at, you know, twerking for Corona bottles and just, you know, stepping on roaches. So the moral of the story is Carlo is overdosing off Goya powder and he's doing something and getting high off his own supply. See, this is the problem with these tethers, especially from these South American countries. They done fled and got their cocaine cowboys on. They got mm -hmm. so much hatred and vitriol for their people in their homeland that they can't even go back to their homeland without, you know, running from a village or being on the track to selling their body for loose change. So this just goes to show you that all skin folk ain't kin folk and Carlo just need to go sit down and set his ass up because he don't represent real Venezuelan people, let alone any people in South America who want to make their countries a better place. So the moral of the story is, you know, get down and lay down and just get smacked up inside your head with a brick of cocaine. Um, Thank you, brother Tyreek, for letting me come on and keep doing your thing. Thank you, brother. Yeah, boy, these folks, man, yeah, there's a lot of insecurities. When folks got to run all over the place, let, let's be real. You know, there's these people who are running all over the place and hiding and you got to go get sanctuary in all these different countries. You always got to be in our spaces trying to project your weird nonsense. It's never the people that decimated your homelands. All across the board, it, you're never mad over in Africa. You're not mad at the Chinese for smacking you around over there. You're not mad at the British. Some of the guys in the Caribbean, you're not mad at the French for smacking down on you. Parts of East Africa, the Somalis, and they're not mad at the Arabs for smashing down on them. All the people who didn't smash down on them, they didn't 
pull the Jedi mind trick, you desire to be like them. And the only people that has stood up for you without wanting anything is us. And the vitriol is always towards us. Let me tell you what that's about. And I talked about this before. The book 48 Laws of Power talked about that too. Sometimes, and, and I, I did a deep dive on when you help certain people. When you help people, that psychologically, when, when you're supposed to be equals and then you are in a position to help another group of people, when you help certain people and you're supposed to be equals, the minute you help them and try to elevate them on a subconscious level in their mind, they look at that as an unequal relationship. Now they feel less than because they had to be lifted up by you. So now they feel beneath you because you had to lift them up. And then that makes them insecure and contemptuous because now the relationship is not equal. Because people talk Pan-Africanist, 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 and that's supposed to be about Black folks having an equal camaraderie globally. But the thing is, it's always foundational Black Americans having to elevate and save people and help people. It's never the other way around. It's us always helping people. And the more we help these people, the more insecure they feel. Because when we help people and we always come to the rescue, we are looked at as global heroes. That's why anywhere you go around the world, there's murals of foundational Black Americans. There's worship of foundational Black Americans, emulating of foundational Black Americans. Even down there in Giancarlo's homeland, Venezuela, you got them rapping and dancing and dressing like us and doing graffiti like us. You understand? Hugo Chavez, he's a rata. He's inspired by us. You understand? So when these people who come from these majority black countries, where it's just nothing but black folks, a sea of black faces, you have to sit here and watch us over here, who are 12% of the population, be the face of global blackness that messes with you. Many of them, it messes with them that a group of people who are in the belly of the beast, who's a minority over here, who's dealt with the most egregious forms of oppression that they over there, they have not dealt with what we've dealt with over here, but we've dealt with it absorbed it and survived it and then stayed 10 toes down and then got up out of it, dusted ourselves off, made sure we were good and then say, we're going to make sure everybody else is good too. Nobody on earth has done that in recorded history. Nobody has done what foundational black Americans have done in recorded history. Nobody has been through that and got out of it and dusted themselves off and became a cultural influence around the world. Nobody has done that. In order for a particular ethnic group to become a dominant culture worldwide, they have to go around beating people and maiming and assaulting people. They got to go in there with weapons. We did it based on our Majora spirit, sir. Giancarlo, I see you giving the thumbs down with your little old pudgy insecure ass. That bothers the people like Giancarlo and others. That foundational Black Americans are so thorough that we absorbed and survived such egregious and horrific behavior and didn't flee all over the place. And we still stand courageous after all of that. And we still fight. We're the only people who are consistently fighting against the oppressive system without fleeing. That's just unfathomable to people around the world. What's in those FBA people? My goodness. And the fact that you don't have it, that bothers you. Because you had to come flee and be around us. You didn't flee to Spain, Giancarlo. 
When y'all flee, you're not fleeing to these places that colonize you. You're not fleeing to Portugal. You're not fleeing to France. You're not fleeing to Britain. Some people do, but not all. You're not fleeing to Saudi Arabia. You come right up around foundational black Americans because that's where you can get protection and that's where we've made a lane for melanated immigrants to come up and grow in life. No other place has created a lane for you. I want some of these folks to understand. That's why we don't tolerate any kind of damn disrespect. You can't go nowhere and come up because nobody created a lane for your ass to go and come up. The only people who created that lane for you is us. You understand? It's going to be some respect from now on. Let's get genius in here. Well, let's get a lot of people in here. Well, let's get united we stand. United we stand, hop on in here. United we stand, hop on in. Unmute your microphone, sir. Uh, Tariq, is that me? You're talking United? Yes, yes. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Hey, I appreciate your space, man. I'm, I'm a white guy. I, you know, give you a little background. I'll be brief. I'll be mindful of the other speakers over here. I won't be long-winded, and I'll be respectful, you know? Yeah. Um, you know, these spaces, I'm learning, you know, what it means to be foundational black America, me being two years older than you, uh, growing up in Chicago, you know, I, I appreciate the well-spoken... Uh, black Americans in this country. And uh, with that, I want to give you a little background. You know, I grew up in uh, uh, North Side Chicago in the projects. You know, I, I grew up in the air in the 80s when Jordan was uh, fighting over there, Bill Lambeer in your neck of the woods over there. Uh, I want to say is, uh, I want to talk real quickly about the uh, NAFTA agreement and how it affected the black community in Detroit. And I noticed that you're a native of Detroit and I want to ask you, with my knowledge about NAFTA, when Bill Clinton got it stamped into law in 1994, I personally seen it uh, affect and send those jobs in Michigan south of the border, which at that time, you know, they had 80% manufacturing and 20%, which out of all the states got affected by NAFTA, it was the Detroit, the Ypsilanti, and all those uh, auto part manufacturer mom and pop businesses, as well as the... Uh, the big autos over there as well. I wanted to uh, pick your brain, sir, and how you felt that how NAFTA has affected the black community, black Americans, foundational black Americans. Right. There's so many, m many policies that are put together are put together to undermine us. So that's nothing new. There's so many things that have been put together to undermine us. So it's just another chink on the chain, man. Um, when they started building railroad systems in certain urban areas, that was to uproot us. When they were building certain parks in certain areas, that was to kind of dissipate the black business districts. When they were building freeways, that was to undermine and um, uproot a lot of black businesses. So they always done little things. They would rezone areas to undermine our businesses um, the other day I was talking about how they created the, um, the bar having to pass the bar out there in South Carolina in order to stop black people from becoming lawyers, because it was relatively, it was easier to become a lawyer. You didn't have to go through a bar. Um, you didn't have to pass a bar at one point, but when they saw so many black people were becoming lawyers, they needed a governing body to kind of say yay or nay. So that's why they created the bar. So little, a lot of institutions have been created um, for the sake of anti-blackness to undermine us. So we're used to it. It's just another day. This is why we try to get rid of the system of white supremacy altogether. Let's get Genius in here. Genius, hop in. Hey, what's going on, bro? I'm good, Genius. Are you Eritrean, Ethiopian, or Somalian? No, I'm Somalian. Uh, I just came on. I want to. I want to know. Like, uh, there's been a lot of like uh, slander between the Somalis and the FBAs. I want to know where that stems from, and how do we bridge the gap and like just end this nonsense? You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Well, a lot of your brethren, they are over here. 
And they get over here and they think that it's pretty cool to be very disrespectful and try to denigrate foundational black Americans. So that's what the problem is. Do you think it's more so just trolling online? Because in reality, I like I don't I don't see it like in, in real life. You know what I mean? Well, no, they they can't do it in real life because uh, you know, Foundation of Black American will slap their eyebrows off them foreheads. So they have to do it online. So what they do, they troll online, and and some of these people they get into certain political positions, and bam, they still have that same mindset and that same disposition. So our thing is, yeah, don't be trolling online. Don't come over here and try to be disrespectful and denigrate us because it goes beyond just trolling online. Um, we get in certain situations where these folks are now police officers. You understand? Like up in Minnesota, there's a lot of you know, Somalian brothers who are in, the, in law enforcement. So we see a lot of them start acting like the white supremacists. Down in Texas, you got a lot of um, West African um, COs in the prisons down there. They act just like the white supremacists. So yeah, it becomes a problem once they get in positions where they can actually harm us and they got the backup of the white supremacists. So yeah, we're but, on alert with these folks. But that one cop, that one Somali cop, he ended up, he killed a white lady. He, right. And I'm a Noor. I know Muhammad Noor, but yeah, that's, he's an outlier. There's other cops out here that are not killing white people. So yeah, that's nah, that. I, I hear you, bro. I hear you, bro. That's all I wanted to say, still. Like, it's not. I, it's more so just trolling, I believe, online. But I don't think smart people actually hate uh, yeah. African Americans. All that is just jokes, and no, no, no. Listen, the Klan started off as a damn joke. All right, it literally started off as a joke. If you look up the history of the Ku Klux Klan, they say it started off. We're just doing a prank. That prank turned into a terrorist organization. Jim Crow was a joke. It was a comedy routine. It was literally a joke. Then that joke morphed into Jim Crow laws. You understand? So all of that, they're just trolling stuff. That ain't cutting it. That trolling gets offline and they take that same mentality into law enforcement. You take that same mentality into a courtroom. You take that same mentality into a political position. Yeah. So, yeah, we take it very, very seriously. All right, big, big something. What's up, big? Big, big one, whatever your name is. What's your name? Hop on, man. Unmute your microphone, brother. Whatever your name is, Big Borgon. I don't know what your name is, and you got some kind of animal in your page. Are you an are you a non FBA dude? And is that some bush meat you about to cook in your hand in your profile picture? You look like you have a snack in your arms. What kind of animal is that, sir? All right, he's probably cooking whatever animal that is. Let me get some other people in here. All right, he got out of here. Let's get Rome worldwide. All right, let's get Rome worldwide. Let's get it in. Rome worldwide. Hop on in. Tariq, how are you going? I'm, uh, good, I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying the space. Um, Matt, I'll just as an outsider, I'm actually kind of curious in regards to like your repra, uh, reparations. Are you, when it comes to foundational black Americans, are you going to, like, let's say these reparations do eventually come, are you going to accept them in the form of some devalued dirt piece of paper that possibly the US dollar could turn into, or do you want land, gold? What's the, what's the long-term outcome? Like, what's the desire long-term? That dirty, devalued paper, it, it only gets dirty and devalued when we about to get it. Yes, they, well, you know, never, you know what you know what I mean. You, you know what I mean. Like it seems like the the game will rob. No, no. Any anytime it comes to us getting the money, all of a sudden the money's going to be worthless. I don't want to hear that bullshit. Look, it, the money wasn't devalued when the Ukrainians got it. The money ain't devalued now that all of these immigrant groups are coming over here. They're getting money. The money ain't devalued and dirty and 
Anytime when it comes to us, all of a sudden it, it becomes apocalyptic. Oh, oh no, no. If y'all get cash reparations, the, the, the stock market is going to crash the next day and everybody's going to be trading magic beans. What you That's what you need. You need magic beans with bitcoins. Uh, shut up. I don't want to hear these doomsday scenarios when it comes to us to get us getting our money. Now the, the sky is going to fall. No, give me the damn cash and I'll go buy the land and I'll go buy some magic beans and I'll go buy all that other stuff. Lord, the, that, that's low key pocket watching too. Everybody wants to get into pocket watching when it comes to us. What are y'all going to do with the money? Y'all going to buy rims and Jordans? Yeah, that's fine. What's wrong with rims and Jordans? Huh? What is wrong with rims and Jordans? There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Let me ask, we got a white supremacist in here. Dr. Davinsky, let me ask him. He's an Australian white supremacist. That guy probably called one of his brethren. Dr. Davinsky, let's get a white, a white supremacist perspective. Dr. Davinsky, can you hear me, sir? Salam alaikum, brother Tariq. How you doing? Alleged Good. white supremacist. Alleged. Alleged suspected white supremacist. Suspected. <laughs> um, yeah, so I wanted I wanted to touch on what we we're talking about yesterday about the uh, the bleach. Slow down, slow down, boy. You just you just going on a mayonnaise mission. Slow down. I got to ask you a question. I'm trying to ask you something, Doctor Davinsky. Uh, what would be wrong with us spending our money on rims and Jordan shoes? What would be wrong with that? People always throw that thing in our faces that we we're gonna misspend our reparations money on Jordans and. Um, rims and jewelry. What's wrong with that? What's wrong with spending our money on that? Well, it would be the issue is is it's meant to uplift your socioeconomic status in society, right? It's meant to you know act as kind of a restore a restoration for our previous past ills that have uh, you know kind of hampered uh, black social mobility. So that wouldn't you know spending it on stuff like that wouldn't have long-term uh, benefits to your socioeconomic status, you know, the same way that having, say, free college admissions or, um, you know, these kind of universal health cares or, uh, you know, maybe even home loans. Like, it would be wasted money. Not really. I mean, hell, what if we just want Jordans? It's a debt that's old. Right? Yeah, but... The, the thing is, is you'd become crawling back and you'd ask for more reparations because you squandered well, but, the money. No, because that's the thing. If we get the reparations, you can say, hey, hey, we've already given it to you. So, hey, don't come back. So they would have a great argument. So we wouldn't we wouldn't have to come crawling back because they can say we gave it to you. So we don't. Hey, we uh, fair is fair. We gave it to you. So there it is. And we wouldn't really have an argument to counter that. I don't think that they're really insecure about that because if we were just going to flip the money off, they would have given it to us already. I think the problem is they know that we're going to do phenomenal things with that money and they are very threatened by that, right? What about if you got some land like N the Native Americans, you could have a few casinos like the um the that that black, that black tribe down in in Florida, what are they called? The um the, they uh, they're mostly black American, but they got a bit of native in them. Um, Seminole, the Seminole Indians. Why but yeah, they, they played again. They they finessed the Black Seminoles when it came to the money. They started acting like they didn't know what the Black Seminoles were, so they were playing games with them. But um, yeah, just give us the money and then we'll buy the land ourselves. Um, now where where's your chick, man? Where's your your lady? Your lady was that was with you last night. Where is she? Oh, she's outside. But you know what's funny, right? Is that my girl is half white. And so technically your wife is half white as well. So we're race traders to the same degree. And oh, so, so. because your kids are genetically less black than you because you married a, uh, you know, a biracial woman. But a lot of black people, foundational black Americans, there's, I got French in me, dude. I got like 20% French. I got some French bullshit up in me. So a lot of us have European ancestry, but that doesn't change our foundational black American lineage. Right. Go ahead, Dr. Davinsky. What's the percentage that you need to get reparations? You would have to have one parent 
whose lineage go back. It's not a percentage of blackness. It's a lineage. See, we're not doing the, it's not blood quantum. That's why with Native American tribes, they don't go by DNA tests. They go by documented lineage because we that's. Have, we have thousands of ancestors there, and a lot of Native Americans do do blood quantum. Um, I know that for Pine Ridge, you need uh, 25%. They reduced it from 50%. So you need 25% blood quantum. When it comes to direct lineage, we have thousands of ancestors. And there's a significant amount of... Damn, slow down. When you get to Mayo Babylon. Yeah, I'll, uh, over here, they stay away from that DNA. They stay away from it. They go to the paperwork. Because you can finesse the paperwork. See, that's what they like. They 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 finesse. You can finesse the paper. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait, wait. Hold on. I don't think my my thing. Um. Yeah, they they put their names on the dolls' rolls. They the the white supremacists back in the late eighteen hundreds, early nineteen hundreds. They paid five dollars to get on the dolls' rolls to be listed as a Native American, and so they they pulled the finesse a long time ago. So they like to just stick to the paperwork. Because if you do actual DNA test on these people, they all come from Europe. Most of their ancestry is going to be in Europe, not one drop of indigenous blood nowhere. So they stay away from the damn um, DNA test. They're real adamant about that. But um, Yeah, and it looks like you're, sh you're shying away from the DNA test too. You're talking about lineage. And as I said, we have thousands uh, of ancestors. So what if one of those... Now, stop babbling. I've done DNA and my, my lineage is here. My lineage is on this land. My lady's lineage is on this land. So what yeah, about someone who's 5% black or 2% foundational black American? There's you would thing, get, that, get there's, the full reparations? There's no such thing as a 2% foundational black American. That would make zero sense. How can you Exactly. Be so you do have a blood quantum limit. I want to know what your blood quantum I, limit is. There's no such thing as a 2% foundational black American. So what's the percentage? What makes someone black? F FBA. Your lineage. It's yeah, not you, about. You, yeah, but what what do you mean by lineage? So as I said, we have we have four great uh, four grandparents, right? Right. Uh, eight great great grandparents. Sixteen. Uh, it, it just multiplies by two every every right. generation. And you go back, you know, you know, under if ten generations, you have. You're babbling. Stop babbling so much and listen. Damn. If one of your parents can trace their lineage to slavery in America, then you're a foundational black American. You understand? So there's no percentage of blackness. That's irrelevant. You can be a light-skinned black person, and if your lineage can go back to slavery in America, you're a foundational black American. That's the great thing about us. We come in different shades. You understand? So the percentage of blackness it's about lineage sir yeah but you're not understanding my point we I have do. no so look let's say that you have a parent that uh has black lineage fba lineage right but they're only five percent so they have a great 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 grandparent that was a slave uh they would get the full amount as someone who's 90 percent fba genetically slow down slow down you mean they're only five percent what if they're five percent black yeah, five percent black. They still had that lineage. They're still connected to it. It's still part of their ancestry. Okay, so if they're five percent black, what race are they now? What are they classified as now? Well, that's that's my point. Is it, it's ambiguous where you draw the line. So I want to know where you draw the line. Is it twenty five percent? Is it a quadroon? Is it a mulatto? Is it fifty percent? Where is it an octo? Like where do you draw the line for what's black enough with the lineage? Because you, you're you trying to make some artificial chart based on blood quantum, and it's not based on blood quantum of blackness. Because let's say you get a person who's, hell, 100% black, who's from Nigeria, they're not qualified to get the reparations at all. Yeah, I guess that. But what about someone who self-identifies as white, and according to, there's a Vox article I can send you, 10%. Of southerners, white southerners, self-identified white southerners have at least two percent black ancestry. You Would you think that those ten percent of so-called white it, southerners can't, they can't get it? I had a discussion with the caller earlier. If you're classified as white now, it's nullified. That means you have to be a foundational black American now 
You can't be a white person and say, oops, I got a black great great grandmother. You want to circle back and claim that. No, 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 no. You have to be a foundational black American now. Reparations is for foundational black Americans. And that term means past and present and lineage. You understand? So what if, what if they find out they're 2% black American, right? And they start identifying as FBA. Do they get that? Because oh, no, 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 no. You don't do. See, that's the great thing. You don't get to do a Rachel Dolezal. all. You don't get to say, oops, there's money on the table. Let me change my classification. You have already have had to been classified as black already. You already have got to be Sweet. black. It got to be on your birth certificate in the whole shebang. You got to be black. You have to have been a black person all your life. You can't just go change something overnight because you see a check there. So, okay, look- Let, let's take you for an example. You're probably, what, 30, you said you're 20% French or so. Let's say you're 30% white, right? Uh, you're married to a woman who's half white. So your kids are less than 50%. Your kids have kids. That would be, let's say they marry white their kids are going to be less than 20% black. At what point? So you think there's no genetic component at all? It's lineage. It's lineage. So hypothetically, let's say that kids now, most likely my children are going to marry and procreate with other foundational black Americans. Now let's say one of my children turned out to be a little Sambo and they meet your daughter and then they procreate with your your daughter when she gets older. And then we have a little. But you you call it me a sambo. Hold on, hold on. yeah, yeah. I'm just saying. I'm just. What, I mean, what if my kid is a sambo? All right. Yeah, I, yeah. I said that. What if he's a sambo and just wants to get all white women? All right. What if he wants to just get all white women like this gentleman? You're a sambo though. You married a half oh. white woman. How is that a sambo? My my woman is black. How is that she's a sambo? Half white. She's half white. Genetically no, speaking, she's half white. Yeah. There's no such thing as half white. That's like saying half milk. There's no such thing as half white. Does she look phenotypically banshee? No, 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 she looks mixed race. She white. looks biracial. And there's that's why you went for her. There's no such thing as half white. There's no such thing. Once that black is in, there's black, sir. Coffee is coffee. It's not half milk. It's coffee. I got coffee, sir. You're spoiled milk. You're different, see? Your milk, I got coffee. There's no such thing as half white. My lady's black. She's got lo- she's got phenotypically white, uh, like half white features. She's got long curly hair. Every fly about my woman is all the black stuff. A big old nose. A why pretty- did why didn't you go for a full bantu? Why did you go for a mulatto? Well, a bantu. Well, I don't. I, you over there got an African woman and knock yourself out. Yeah, you, you got you a full African woman. You you got you got you a Bantu woman, and the Bantu's over there with you. Oh no, she's that's that's my. Uh, got a foundational Black American woman. What would I do with a Bantu? My wife is a foundational Black American lineage, so I got somebody from my lineage, sir. And you're over there having gutter sex, and you're slumming. Uh, l- l- let me make this. No 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 no, no stop because you, know, you have a, a bed wench. Over there, and y'all have this little tacky sexual relationship. Everybody don't have these little tacky unions. You understand? I come from a lineage. My wife comes from the same lineage. So we have a normal relationship. You got some little freaky plantation colonization stuff going in your bedroom, sir. You don't have the same lineage. My wife. Everybody ain't on that, Dr. Davinsky. Everybody is not weird and. You got to have a fetish, and y'all just got no, no. Up. Your wife is half white. My wife is half. It's black, sir. There's no such thing. Is she's sir. half white, sir? There's no such thing as half white. You got struggle genes that are easily diluted, sir. There's no such thing as half white. It's coffee, sir. You understand? It's coffee. There's no milk. Why does it? Why doesn't she look like a West African then? Because she, she looks like from, a mulatto. Because she is not from West Africa, sir. She's not from West because she's Africa. Half white. Of course she's not. She's half white. Half she's, of her ancestry, millions of her ancestors were white people living in Europe. That's who you married. And, I, and, and that's, I think that's the thing that upsets you because she ain't white. 
because I put them big black. She's F- just as much white as she- I, I put them big black FBA um, jeans in her, and I got them jeans right. I got them, them the children black. I stopped them. That white ain't no white bloodline no more. Big black daddy stopped that, and I think that bothers you, right? Because don't y'all? Well, that's what I'm stopping with my fiance. I'm I'm stop. I'm doing the bleaching process. Our kids are gonna come out. She's stopping your struggle, jeans. Because if y'all have children, they're gonna be. They're gonna look far less black than she. No, they're they're gonna be black. So she's stopping them struggle, jeans too. And I think you're upset because I I use my black majara mojo. Your kids look less black than you. I know I got my Majora spirit to to blacken up them jeans. Sir. Your kids look less black than you, sir. Children have big old afros, sir. So my kids are not they white. They have long curly hair. They're mulattoes. Yeah. My kids are not look, white. Uh, three. Let me, and listen, you're upset. Sounds like you're let upset. Me, let me make a point. Let me make a point. You sound upset that Black Daddy got them jeans up out the paint. Is that what it is? Do you feel like I've committed white genocide? Because that's what y'all say. Do you feel like I? Okay. White... So you you're a black man. I'm a white man. Dr. Davinsky, do you think that I committed black genocide by wiping them white jeans out? Is that what it is, sir? Doctor Francis Cress Welsing talks about this all the time. A lot of you white supremacist suspects are very insecure about black men. Uh, listen, listen to this. listen to. This. About black men wiping them jeans out. You get half of your jeans from either parent. You get more from the mother, actually. So your kids are a bit more white than you. Okay. You You get half of your jeans from either parent. You married a biracial woman, right? My wife is no more less or black than your wife, less or black for you. We both went for uh, biracial women. And uh, both half white, half black. You're no more. You're just as much as a, a race traitor as I am. You understand no. that? Um, no, because my lady is still black. Okay? There's not a race trait of my lady's race is black, sir. That's how that works. So you're just trying to do some I'm white and I say so to make yourself feel better. I would feel insecure, too, if my genes were so, you know, so easily diluted, sir. You just got easily diluted genes. That's okay. It's, you, you can't help it. It's just with the, the card nature dealt. It's all right. But um, anyway, like I said, man, those you, you you're going extinct. You the went for a biracial woman. The white supremacists are going extinct. You, you're you're upset because you're going extinct, Doctor Davinsky, as a white supremacist suspect. So you know, let's... Davinsky, like I said last night, you're going to hunky heaven, sir. What are you going to do up there in hunky heaven? You're going to look down at your mulatto kid, sir. You're going to look down at little Don Quarius <clears throat> from Hunky Heaven. Yeah. You're going to be up there with all the other white supremacists. You're going to be up there with um, um, Bull Connor, all of the other historic white supremacists looking down at all of your um, mulatto offspring. Your people that, are going extinct. The average African Americans to be in Hunky Heaven looking down at your little nephew and your little grandkid with an afro. Running your people around, thirty percent white, <laughs> sir. Your grandkids are going to have average white America is not thirty percent. Doctor Davinsky, you're going to be looking down from hunky heaven, and your kids are going to have afros and. It's joy. okay. You don't like monoracial black women. You like biracial. Her kids are going to be doing the electric slide with barbecue sauce on their fingers, and that bothers you. You're going to be in hunky heaven, upset and mad, because your children. I mean, it's okay. okay. You don't like black women. Your just say children. it. Just say, I don't like. Or you're upset because you're I don't children... like monoracial black women. Just say it's Rick. You married. Are you in hunky heaven? Your children are going to be drinking Kool Aid and eating Popeye's chicken with my kids. And that bothers you, sir. And the Popeye's chicken is going to be so good. And. Just, 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 hey, uh, <laughs> so just admit that you like biracial women. You don't like monoracial black women. Just say it. Just say it. Be a man. Um, sir. Just, just say you like the white jeans that pop, make her hair long and curly, that make her skin more. That's the bed winch in there giggling with her little old musty self. <laughs> tell, tell her go to buy some of the root work deodorant that we got. Get some, de- get some root work for that bed winch of yours in there, and tell her when she has the first kid, give his middle name 
Tariq. Name, that, that kid is going to be name uh, him just Tariq. as white as your kids are black. You understand? Your kids, uh, look, when you go to Hunky Heaven. Let's, let's, hang on, Tariq. Can we do some math for a minute, right? Yours is going to have a kid. She's going to name it Tariq. And <laughs> he's going to be a radical. He's going to look up to me. I want your child, your mixed biracial child to look up to me. He's going to be idolizing me. All right. He's going to have on a hidden colors t-shirt. He's going to be um, singing mink slide songs in his bedroom. He's going to be idolizing me while you're in hunky heaven. And I love it. So anyway, let me get some more folks in. Thank you, Dr. Davinsky. That's Dr. Davinsky, the suspected white supremacist. Yeah. yeah. The, the struggle genes. He's upset about them struggle genes. All right, let's see who we got. We got a lot of people in here. How many people we got in here? Well, we got 1,200 people in the building. Shout out to everybody in here. Shout out to everybody in here. Dr. DeVinci gets funny. Got that bed wench in the back giggling. She better stop. She going to giggle her ass into being missing somewhere, messing with Dr. DeVinci's ass. All right, now, whoever that bed wench's family is, when she show up missing, don't y'all call me. She going to giggle until all of a sudden she's somewhere buried under a lake down there in Australia with this fool. Y'all keep playing around. Y'all lay up with these suspected white supremacists. And you know that they are suspected white supremacists. And they, the family's always calling me. Every time something happened, they call my ass. Hey, brother. Um, hey, Tariq, I, lo I love your stuff. Um, can you um, retweet the GoFundMe? My, my cousin has been missing for three weeks. She went on a date with a white man, and we have not seen her. Okay. Yeah, well, then we pull up tweets of her denigrating us. Just like the dude down in the the the, the Olam, what's that guy who got stabbed by the white woman? Which was unfortunate. I don't make light of it, but boy, him and his family, we all remember them tweets. Him and his whole family was tweeting cash shit about us and just praising white people for years. Where the white women at? Ooh, I love some white women. Ooh, these hood rat black bitches. Ooh, these are cotters. The cotters ain't shit. Oh, they were on all of that. And then the white woman poked him up. And now all of a sudden, they're the blackest thing ever. Boy, they, they put on them kente cloths and kufis. And oh, we're the same nigga. We are all together. Okay. All right. All right. Hi, I'm Mateo. Do you want to learn about Hidden Heroes? Hidden Heroes from A to Z is a cool book that tells the stories of amazing black heroes you might not know about. You'll meet inventors, you'll meet explorers, and leaders who change the world. It's fun, inspiring, and you can learn so much. Get your copy now at HiddenHistoryMuseum.com. Let's discover our hidden heroes together.